So we got we got everything fitted up now for the most part. All the intercooler charge piping is on, which was pretty easy in comparison to the hot side piping because that was like pretty much impossible. So the cold side fit pretty well actually. The main advantage is that you got all these couplings that are kind of flexible and you can move things around, which you don't have with the hot side with those V bands. That's they just have to pretty much fit perfect. See, I got the pipe on from the turbo to the intercooler and the, the blow off valve is, is right in here on that. Last thing I need to do is just run the vacuum line to that. Um, I think we already talked about but the I actually put the lines to the oil filter relocation spot. And uh, intercooler mounted up pretty good once I uh, added my bracket and strengthened their bracket. And once you put all the hoses on, it's pretty solid. It doesn't move at all, so pretty happy with that. Put on the next uh, tube up here, which like barely fits up through a hole that's already in the body. It's two and a half inch, and then when it goes to the next, the final tube, it goes to three inch. So that's a little coupler. Fit all this off, fit pretty well, actually. Um, put a little heat tape on the bottom of this so it doesn't get too affected by the turbo. I also had to modify this upper coolant pipe. They actually provide this uh, stainless pipe instead of just using the rubber because the rubber would go right over the turbo. So they use that in an effort to like kind of keep it away and uh, be less affected by the heat. I put the line, uh, the oil feed line on to the top of the turbo. That um, worked pretty well. I just routed around away from everything. Uh, hooked up the oil drain, put the MAF in. So the last thing now is just run the vacuum lines and uh, wire up the gauges. I drew a little diagram to try to figure out uh, all the vacuum lines because come to find out there's a lot of different diameters that you could be using for uh, like blow off valve and boost gauge and waste gate. So I drew this little diagram to figure it out. I'm basically running off one of the fuel rail vacuum lines which um, goes down to the blow off valve and then it also has a little tee off to go to the the boost controller gauge the AEM true boost and that's just so that the, the boost gauge can sense the manifold pressure because that's coming right off the manifold and then for the actual wastegate line we drilled and tapped the turbo and so that's coming off and then Teen, um, exactly how the AEM true boost instructions show you for an external wastegate basically. So you tee off, go into the side port of the wastegate, and then you go to their boost solenoid, which is actually right here, and then goes to the top um, port on the wastegate. So I just drew all this out so I could figure out all the diameters because I'm actually starting with a uh, quarter inch. This is all quarter inch, but then you need an eighth inch line that goes to the gauge. And then off the turbo, I'm going 3 16 um, teeing off the boost solenoids 3 16 but then it needs to go to quarter for the actual port on the wastegate. So I need to go. What I did was I actually got a different fitting that they didn't provide that went straight to quarter. You can see this is smaller. So that was 3 16 and then I went straight to quarter. So I didn't need any type of different adapter, and then that'll go right to wastegate. Uh, then this T will have to then go to quarter as well for the wastegate. So there's, th there's three, three diameters I'm dealing with, eighth inch, three sixteenths, and quarter. Oh, look at that. That's the biggest grommet of them all. Grommet guy. They should have the grommet guy on spark plugs, you know. <laughs> the grommet guy? You think there's a guy? There's a grommet guy? Yeah. He was the firewall grommet guy? Yeah. Should have had him on designing the heads and spark plugs. We found a sweet grommet to use. Bam, right there, and it goes right into the footwell next to the pedals. And it already has a little thing for like adding adding some more cables there, so that's what we're gonna do. You just gonna cut that off? Probably. This is the line for the boost controller. The gauge part of the boost controller. Blow off valve line. 
is gonna go to the fuel rail line, which I think is the vacuum source for the regulator. And that's also gonna feed the boost controller gauge. And then we got coming off the compressor housing, a line that goes right here. And then T's, one line goes to the controller solenoid, boost controller solenoid. The other line will go down to the wastegate. Then the last one we need is from the outlet of the solenoid to the top of the wastegate as well. I've decided I don't really like any of the gauge pods that were out there for the Mustang. And I also wanted a way to hold the, uh, the, the tuner itself so that I could display some of the OBD2 uh, parameters at all times. So I didn't really see any pods out there that could hold that tuner and, and looked half decent. So my first step was I modeled the radio itself and that's because I wanted to replace the radio completely with this new gauge pod so I only modeled it roughly and just kind of cared about the front panel area and the the tab locations because that's how my new pod is gonna mount so once I had that modeled uh, I could use that to base my a new pod off of. So working from that basic front panel shape from the radio and the mounting tabs I was able to get to this final shape for my actual gauge pod and as you can see I can only use three of the four mounting tabs because the tuner itself has a very large connector that has to be connected right there and comes right where the, uh, the fourth tab would be. So I think three should be fine. I modeled the tuner first so that I knew what uh, kind of shape I needed to hold that in. And then from there, I just tried to figure out the best way to hold the gauges. And I could tell that there isn't quite enough room in this outline to fit the tuner and the gauges. But underneath here is just an HVAC uh, bezel, so I think I'm just going to trim out a little bit here and here on the bezel, and then I'll just throw the gauges in there. So the basic idea here is that the, the tuner will slip in here under this little tab, and I'm planning to just put some Velcro on the back of the tuner and secure it down here. I have this little cutout so that you can reach in and grab it because I know I'll probably want to be taking that in and out uh, every so often, so I wanted to make it easy. My plan is to get this SLS 3D printed out of a nylon material. That's going to be the most cost effective option. Uh, and it's, it's actually a very strong material and should hold up well. I'm also going to get it uh, dyed black. And if that doesn't quite match right, I can always paint it. Yeah, so to explain why, what I'm doing here. Here's the gauge pod. But my problem was there's not enough uh, area here, real estate, to have the tuner and gauges below it, but I'll be able to just cut a little bit out of this HVAC surround so that I can fit gauges there. And then the gauge bezel should hide uh, the cut line so it doesn't look bad. Here's the final fitment with the gauges installed. Everything seems to fit great and I love the look and just a really clean setup.